Are you searching for a good 4K camera but you don't want to break the bank? In this video, I'm going to tell you why, in my opinion, this camera, which is the Lumix Panasonic G85, is the best 4K mirrorless camera under $1,000. by Panasonic. I bought my own camera and what I'm telling you are just my thoughts. I've been using the Lumix JD5 for about eight months and before getting it I did an extensive research to find the perfect camera to shoot my travel videos. But let me tell you which were the criteria that I used so that you can see if those will apply to you as well and this might be a good fit. The criteria were very simple. First, I wanted a 4K resolution camera. Second, I wanted to spend less than $1,000. Third, I wanted a camera with image stabilization. And if it's true that the perfect camera doesn't exist, it is also true that there are multiple cameras that will answer to the criteria that I was searching for. So let me tell you why I picked the Lumix JD5. First thing, the Panasonic Lumix JD5 does have 4K resolution and also in the US it has unlimited filming in 4K which means the camera will not overheat and you can record until your SD card is full while other cameras like the Sony a6500 have an overheat problem so they have limited 4K filming. Moving to the price, the Panasonic JD5 costs less than $900. With $1000 you actually get a very good kit lens. The third criteria that I mentioned was the image stabilization and the Panasonic JD5 does offer a very decent image stabilization system which work in combination with the stabilization of their lenses. As a matter of fact, the kit lens, the 1260mm lens that comes with the camera, has an image stabilization as well. Of course, it is not like putting the camera on a gimbal, but it is actually very useful and doesn't force you to have a gimbal. And the Panasonic JD5, besides answering to the criteria that I was searching for, comes with other features that I really enjoy. First of all, the camera has a tilt uh, 180 degrees touch screen uh, which is super convenient when you are filming uh, yourself for instance. The battery life is decent. I did buy two extra batteries uh, on Amazon and I will post the links of whatever I mentioned in the description. I love to take time lapses and the Panasonic JD5 has a very easy to use built-in time lapse application where it's very easy to set your intervals, it's easy to set the length of your time lapse and the camera itself will create an mp4 video of your time lapse uh, right away. But if you prefer to create your time lapse manually, the camera will also save the raw files of the still pictures so that you can actually do it yourself. Let me tell you about the ergonomics for a second. The Panasonic JD5 is very lightweight I love the grip which is very very handy in many many situations. The body is solid. I did bump into things a few times and I have no scratches. It's also weather sealed which was very convenient in Iceland for instance. I like the fact that the SD card is very easy to access from the side. Same goes with the batteries which are positioned in a way that don't interfere with your tripod plate. As I said before, there is no perfect camera and the GD5 is not perfect either. So let me tell you which are its limitations. First of all, it is a micro four thirds sensor which will never be the best performing in low light. So eventually it will require very fast lenses 
And for instance, I personally bought um, a 25 millimeter, which is 1.7. Very fast lens. Not only will let me shoot in low light, but will also help me to achieve a very shallow depth of field and to have those beautiful bokeh. I think the full price for this is $250. Very, very often. They put it on sale. I bought from, I think, B&H or Amazon, I can't recall, at $134. So, good stuff. Another thing which is not a strength of this camera is the autofocus. I don't really use autofocus a lot. I prefer to manually focus. But if that is your thing, I believe that Sony and Canon do have better autofocus. A few more things I want to mention is that the Panasonic JT5 doesn't come with the headphones input. So you cannot monitor your audio in camera. And also, it was really stupid to position, I show you, to position the microphone input here so that when your microphone is connected, the jack will be right in front of your monitor. Really? Come on, Panasonic. So this is all for today. And I hope this video is going to help you to decide whether this camera is good for you or not. If you have any questions about this camera, just write me in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Oh,